Namaste and good morning, everyone. Let's uh, start the class with some prayers. Om Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo, Maheshwara, Guru Sakshat, Parbrahma, Tasme, Shri Guru Venama, Om Bhutho Swaha, Tatsa Vitra Vare Nayam, Bhargo Deva Sedhi Mahi, Diyo Yonaha Prachodaya, Asto ma sadgamya, tamso ma jyotirgamya, mrityur ma amritam damya. Om sahna vavatu sahna bhunatu saviryam karvavai, tejasvi navadhi tamastu ma vidvesha vahi. Om shanti 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 om. We often talk about uh, the positive thinking. Okay, if you want to move towards the positivity, our thoughts got to be positive. And there are several ways. Uh, from time to time, we talk about uh, how to keep our thoughts positive. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, the art of uh, affirmation. Very important practice to promote a positive thinking. So in affirmation, what we do, we choose a particular quality in which we are deficient and hold it before our mind for a week or month. For example, if you are impatient and you want to become patient, write the word patience in big letters and put it in a prominent place in your room. This will create a positive mental association. Even if you are unaware that you are looking at the word, continue asserting that you are patient for the time period you have designated for this practice. And this must be done patiently. If you have asserted it for two or three days and find that you are still not patient, then you must realize that you have to have more patience to be patient. Remember that your real nature is positive. When you assert that you possess a positive quality, you are not doing so on the basis of ego or mere mental imagination. Do not develop the notion that what you are asserting is far-fetched and that it does not belong to you. When you assert that you have a certain virtue, your unconscious should not oppose it. You should develop a profound understanding through the study of scriptures and satsang. That the spirit within you is free from all the defects. That spirit is a boundless treasure replete with the divine virtues. Because it's part of God. So what you are asserting is authentic and the negative in you is superfluous. It really does not belong to you. So making strong positive suggestions to yourself does not imply that you are hypnotizing yourself. It is rather a process of self-awakening. You are reminding yourself of what you essentially are. See, this is also affirmation when we sit in the meditation and we sit in the Jnana Mudra. When we tell ourselves that we are not the body, we are not the mind, we are not the intellect, we are the soul, which is joined with the super soul, God. Okay? So it's not a mere imagination or you are not hypnotizing yourself. You are not imposing something upon yourself that is not you. Because in a hypnotic state, 
You can be hypnotized into anything which may not be your own nature. So there's a huge difference between the process of hypnotism and the yogic way of giving yourself strong suggestions that you are positive in nature, that you are part of God. When you assert the positive, you are not being hypocritical. Rather, you are affirming what you truly are. When there is more harmony or sattva in your personality, your affirmations become much more profound. So that means bringing more and more sattvikta into our life. At the physical level, mental level, intellectual level, every which way. Because when there is a rajas, or distraction, you become restless, your affirmations become more verbal, just asserting and affirming in words. And when there's a tamas or inertia in your personality, your unconscious opposes what you are affirming. So that's why sattva in our life is extremely important. Sattva has to be developed in your daily life. So it's not just only eating sattvic food, but also the way you live should be designed so that you don't complicate your life. Because sattvikta is a simplicity also. Do not place yourself in the middle of the negative influence. As a sattva gradually develops and your affirmation of the positive becomes more profound, you will discover greater harmony within yourself. There are times when the mind is not very receptive. But we know that certain times of the day, mind is very sensitive. Those are the most auspicious times for giving strong suggestions to yourself. Your mind is highly sensitive when you wake up early in the morning. When you are taking a shower. At meal times. And also at bedtime. Whatever you assert at these times will be carried into your unconscious with greater intensity. And that's how those affirmations will take roots more effectively. This is why aspirants are encouraged to practice meditation early in the morning. When they first get out of the bed to recite the mantra before they have it meal or even while taking a bath there are mantras where we say that we are taking a bath in Ganga Maya as you continue developing positive suggestions about yourself it is important to understand that your conduct and actions in the world must also be in harmony with your affirmation it's very important. For example, if you're asserting that I am fearless. Because we learned that fearlessness is the very first quality of a jnani, fearless. Then watch out. Do not become frightened of little things in your daily life. Some people are so afraid of the bees even. Or a little mice. So if you are trying to cultivate or trying to affirm that I'm fearless, to watch out. 
try to act in as fearless a manner as you possibly can. That doesn't mean you become careless, sir. You take precautions, sir. But mentally be fearless. Do not allow the affirmation to remain just theoretical. Another way your affirmations work strongly, recognize the positive in others. You should recognize virtues in others. Because often we want to look at the negatives in others. If you are promoting fearlessness or humility or cheerfulness with yourself, try to promote such a quality in others. You cannot make others cheerless and then close your door and say, I am the cheerful self. It doesn't work that way. We are all connected. Radiate your strength to others. You should create an environment in which people notice whatever quality you are promoting within yourself. They should even be able to whisper, look at that person and the qualities she is developing. She is always cheerful. She is always fearless. When you hear yourself being recognized for a certain quality, you are practicing it. It really gives a wonderful encouragement to you also, to others also. And at the same time, you must be strong enough that even when people around you oppose you and project negative thoughts, because everybody is not on the path and everybody is not firmly established on the path, you will hear negative comments also. You must not become discouraged. Rather, you must continue steadily onward. Others' opinion should not matter that much. We have to see what the effect of others' words are on us. Another point I want to make, we should definitely strive for good, not for fantastic. So the positive images that you bring before your mind must be backed up by rationality. We should not become irrational. You ought not to impose upon your mind something which is a fantasy. For example, a person who is five feet tall should not try to become seven feet tall. It's not going to happen with no matter how much positive thinking you have. Or a person who wants horns on his head should not think positively to try to achieve such a result. Got to be rational. Because this is irrational to think like this. Your positive thinking should be in harmony with your personality and it should be rational. Positive affirmations done properly will lead you to the self. That is the power of suggestion which is immense. Your whole personality can be changed. See, the soul or the self is changeless, but the personality layers, they are changing. And if we pay attention, we can change them towards the positivity. So do so in a positive manner. You can build up strong health. You can have a restful mind. You can increase your concentration. You can be more giving, forgiving. All those qualities we can cultivate. You can draw congenial circumstances if your mind remains positive. So bring to your mind positive images of what you would like to be. 
not the images of calamity. Remember that the nature of your soul is boundless. As you continue onward, you will discover marvelous results, almost miraculous. And you can indeed change your entire experience of the world. And finally, you can be enlightened. That's how these positive affirmations can lead us towards our real nature, the self. But we got to remember that there is an art involved in it. And that art is called Abhyas. Abhyas is a repeated effort. Planned, determined effort based on the study of the scriptures is sustained on a daily basis. It will definitely create a new pattern in your unconscious. Because that's where we need to change, not just on the outer surface, but deep down in the layers of our mind. If your unconscious is filled with impressions of agitations, restlessness, irritation, or fear, then these negative feelings will influence your day-to-day -day life. On the other hand, if you adopt a planned, disciplined life based on yoga and maintain it on a day-by-day -day basis, you will begin to generate new positive impressions. And you will see the transformation in you. Such a lifestyle includes, first of all, getting up early in the morning. You cannot just uh, toss around in the bed after the sunrise. We should rise before the sunrise. You have to have prayers as a part of our daily life. Meditation. Doing some exercises, especially the hot yoga, where the cleansing is involved to internal cleansing. Outer cleansing we all do. We all take shower with beautiful soaps and shampoos, but inside cleansings. Relaxation exercises. Performing your daily duties. Studying. Especially studies of the scriptures. And becoming vigilant about what type of association we keep. That means the company we keep is very, very important. Only then we'll say that we are moving towards that ultimate goal. So these points, if maintained day by day in a balanced manner, the key word is balanced, will help you to generate new grooves in your unconscious. So when they were, wherever there were grooves of hatred, irritability, fear, now you will have, have uh, the new grooves of peace, harmony, cheerfulness. So as these positive impressions gather, your personality would begin to change. As an aspirant, it is important for you to understand that the possibility for change is endless. You should never develop the concept that this is what I am, and nothing can change me. That's not the right attitude for a abhyasi. Instead, there is a boundless source of energy and a boundless dimensions of a freedom within every heart. Because you are essentially the self, the soul. So all that is needed is a sustained effort.
abhyas. As you go on making that effort, you should not oppose it by interrupting your sadhana practice. Because once you adopt a certain plan, you must follow it day by day. Okay? Nirantra. Nirantra. Dhirag kal. Okay? And with love also. Not as a burden, but love. So as is usually the case in life, people generally become too enthusiastic when they first undertake the study of yoga or any other change they want to make. For example, a student begins to study a certain subject and becomes so enthusiastic. He studies it three to four hours at a stretch. Sometimes he studies all night long. And in this process, gets very tired. Or there is a boredom. Will abandon the studies for a month then. So soon he realizes that he should have been studying. But by then it's too late. So it's a great error to become overly enthusiastic. You must try to control and sustain your enthusiasm. Excessive enthusiasm is called a soda water enthusiasm. Have you ever shaken a bottle where there's a carbonation and then just open it? What happens? It just comes out right away. So many people develop the kind of a personality in which they have a lot of energy in the beginning only to let it quickly die down. This has to be controlled. So that's why we have to be very practical about it. The goal should be in our mind and we got to chart it out. How are we going to do it? Develop a balanced lifestyle. So that you can continue your practice every day despite adversity or difficult circumstances in life. Because we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. A lot of uncertainties. So we have to be practical about it. Every day you have a certain amount of time for prayers and meditation. And other spiritual pursuits. Maintaining an uninterrupted sadhana. In this manner is known as abhyasa. Abhyasa. That's how you gather the spiritual momentum. A sadhana that is interrupted has very little effect because you are not gathering a momentum for your spiritual momentum. An interrupted sadhana implies doing certain types of exercises like prayers. Job, meditation for two, three days, then leaving them for a few days and then coming back to them later. That is called interrupted. Okay, so nirantar means daily. Not even no, while you are on a vacation or while you are busy with the relative, somebody is visiting you or you are visiting somebody but your practice should not be interrupted. So the same thing applies to taking a... when we eat food also. Don't we eat food? Or if somebody is taking a medicine, they will take medicine no matter what. So the same thing goes for our daily practice too. And perseverance is the key word, perseverance, in the practice of yoga. And then as an aspirant, you must be persevering at all times and feel joyous about it. Do not be too joyous or too enthusiastic because such excess can be harmful. So moderation. Lord Krishna used the word yukta for all this. Moderation. Control yourself. 
and at the same time aspire to discover more and more true joy as you continue with your abhyas. Develop the type of a personality that feels you are endlessly exploring new mystic secrets. Do not become too content with what you have accomplished in yoga. Do not become complacent by developing the idea that you have practiced a lot of meditation and have developed wonderful qualities and have studied the scriptures. Never think you have done all that is to be done on the spiritual path. That is a great error. There is a term, Sanskrit from Santosh. That means contentment. That Santosh we should have in the worldly pursuits. But no Santosh, we should not think that I'm, I'm, I did enough of this. The spiritual practice. There must be a great thirst for knowledge in your heart. This is what is called astral youthfulness. Your subtle body is youthful when it is sensitive enough to gather knowledge. Subtle body, which is called a suksham sharira. Subtle body. When you become insensitive and assert that you have already learned enough, then you have reached astral old age that you don't want anymore. So even though a person may seem physically young from a mental point of view, he's already old if he doesn't want to learn more. Conversely, you may be physically old, but internally you remain very young. As time passes, you become even younger until your spirit passes from the body. This is the idea behind abhyasa or repeated effort. Furthermore, you should not place a time limit before your mind. The idea of practicing yoga for four months and then abandoning it if there is no perceived advantage is wrong. You must realize that the spiritual movement is a process of integrating your personality irrespective of time. Even a minute degree of success gives you more joy and harmony than you knew before. So there is a parable which deals with the two types of spiritual practitioners. One was an ascetic, a man who practiced intense austerity in the form of a panchagni tap. Panch means five, agni is the fire. So this practitioner was sitting under the sun, completely surrounded by fire on all four sides. In the summer month in India, he was silently enduring the extreme heat. He had the idea that if he could continue like this for a certain length of time, he would gain some kind of a psychic powers or he would please God. One day, Sage Narath met this ascetic and said, I'm going to Lord Vishnu. Do you have a message for him? This ascetic replied, I certainly do have a message for Lord Vishnu. I have been practicing this intense type of austerity for a long time. I want to know how much longer it will take me to behold him. Then Narad continued his way. Soon he met another devotee who wasn't practicing any austerity but was relaxing under a tree, occasionally singing and dancing and singing Kirtan. He said, O devotee, I'm going to Lord Vishnu's dwelling 
Vakunt, do you have any message for him? The devotee answered, indeed I do, I have a message. I would like to know when will I have a darshan or the vision of Lord. So receiving the message, Narad went away. After a certain duration of time, Naraji came back to the ascetic surrounded by the fire, told him that Lord Vishnu said it would take five years of that kind of austerity sustained on a daily basis until he would appear. He became frustrated and jumped away from the fire saying, I cannot endure this for five full years. I cannot go on suffering like this. It's too much. Naraji went on to the other devotee under the tree. This devotee asked, what is the message for me? Naraji said, well, do you see how many leaves there are on this tree? It takes you just as many years doing what you are doing now for Lord Vishnu to appear. When the devotee heard this, he began to dance with great joy, thinking, how wonderful. One day Lord Vishnu will be here and I will behold him. The fact is that the moment he expressed that type of a joy, Lord Vishnu came immediately. He did not have to wait. So the point is that instead of setting a time limit on your sadhana and telling yourself that you must achieve self-realization within five years or else give up yoga, Try to understand that self-realization is yours and that one day you will attain it because that is your real nature. And when you develop this form of understanding, you will experience a bliss that is beyond imagination. You will become one with God and triumph over the world of matter, which is called the Prakriti. People who are interested in owning things are always thrilled when they own a lot of property. It could be the land, it could be the money, it could be the businesses. Imagine what it would be like to own the entire cosmos and become the ruler of it. When you develop cosmic consciousness, and become all that is, you shall indeed become the ruler of the rulers. You will rule the cosmos itself. This is the meaning of liberation. That is what nirvana is. The very purpose of our existence is to attain this. You can call it God-realization, self-realization, Mukti, moksha, nirvana, freedom, liberation, whatever. Those are just the names. But make a firm resolve. I will attain the goal. And continue to move onwards with the insight that you are going to attain God realization. No matter how long it takes. No matter how many impediments you may have to overcome. We got to keep on wading through the mires of illusion. Crossing over the streams of the negative karmas. Fighting against the darkness. The forces of darkness. Only then will bound to scale the heights of glory. So that's why the sustained effort, abhyas is needed. But at the same time, the positive affirmation with a negative mind, negative thoughts, you cannot have a sustained effort. So mind has to be positive. Have to be clear about what we are doing. 
we got to be enthusiastic but not overly enthusiastic we got to be very rational about it but we got to keep on moving keep on doing what we are supposed to do and ultimately we will reach there because that is our real nature we are nothing but part of god so we all are that so we should get the encouragement from these sayings from our upanishads the sayings like tat tvam asi or aham brahmasmi but in order to know what that aham is who i am for that we need to have the positivity in our mind and we have to have a sustained effort the abhyas we need to do it's not just a wishful thinking but this is what it takes let's stop it here om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaye purnam eva visheshyate om shanti 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 thank you very much